Jack Villeneuve had an absolutely terrible time in qualifying for the 2003 European Grand Prix, aquaplaning off in the wet Friday session and then finding no pace on the Saturday. Nick Heidfeld also spun off and stalled the car, forcing a pit lane start for Sauber. Up at the front though, there was a championship fight in full swing between world champion Michael Schumacher and underdog Kimi Raikkonen. Michael had passed Kimi in the standings after a win at the Canadian Grand Prix, but was the Iceman disturbed? Bwah, of course not. He put his car on pole position for the very first time in his career, ahead of championship leader Michael by three hundreds of a second. Also less than a tenth of a second back was Ralph Schumacher, and it was an all-Williams second draw of the grid with Montoya in fourth. Rubens Barrichello was fifth from Gianno Trilli, and David Coulthard's qualifying struggles continued as he could only manage ninth place in the other McLaren. The race was held at the Nürburgring in Germany, with four German drivers on the grid. When the race began, Kimi got underway like a McLaren McMissile and maintained the lead into Turn 1, but behind him there was a change as Ralph Schumacher got up into second ahead of his brother. There were puffs of smoke up and down the field as the cars burnt off excess oil, but everyone made it around the first lap in one piece. At the end of the first lap, the order was Raikkonen, Ralph Schumacher, Michael Schumacher, Barrichello and Montoya. At the back of the field, the out-of-place Heidfeld and Villeneuve began to make their moves through the order. Things were going well for Heidfeld, who you can see here passing Jos Verstappen, but less well for Villeneuve, who had a big spin! He gathered it up, but it was back to square one for Jacques, having dropped to the rear. That's not to say he was the only one having issues in the early stages, though. There goes Olivier Panis losing it from 8th place and doing his best Nick Heidfeld impression, the difference being that Panis was actually able to get the car going again. He was rather lucky though, that gravel trap nearly caught him, but still, such a shame for Olivier, who had qualified so well in 7th place in the Toyota. Okay, I swear this video isn't just going to be a fail compilation, but watch Villeneuve here. Into the chicane, BANG! There goes his front wing! Those bollards were actually pretty notorious that year, as they'd already caught out several drivers in practice and qualifying. Villeneuve's teammate Button, for instance, actually destroyed three front wings in a day at exactly that point on track, so you wonder why the drivers hadn't yet learned. Anyway, with all that going on, I've been very much neglecting the race for the lead, but in all honesty, not much happened in the first stint. Raikkonen and Michael Schumacher set themselves up nicely for a two-stop strategy, both stopping at the end of lap 16 and giving the lead to Ralph Schumacher, who impressively stayed out for another five laps. This showed that he had been keeping up with Kimi not just on merit, but despite a heavier fuel load. Montoya also stayed out, threatening to jump Barrichello who pitted a lap later. Here's the moment of truth for Montoya, and not quite. He came out just behind Barrichello, but still pretty close. Further back, you can also see a little scrap going on between Jano Trulli and the slow qualifying David Coulthard, who was feeling rather held up at this point. Here you see Ralph Schumacher after his stop, and Justin Wilson takes the lead! Only joking, that's a lapped car, and Kimi Raikkonen has already gone through. With that being said though, Ralph has definitely extended his gap over Michael, so that was a good stint from him and a good pit stop from Williams. Slightly slower stop from Toyota though. What's the matter, Cristiano? Oh, a nose change. Jolly good. Not so jolly good as this scene, and it's Raikkonen! 25 laps in, and race leader Kimi Raikkonen blew an engine, taking him out of the race. This was set to be only Kimi's second Grand Prix victory, and it would have given him the lead of the World Championship over Michael Schumacher, but sadly, it just wasn't to be. The Iceman may have been ice cool, but his car couldn't take the heat. Ralph Schumacher then took the lead ahead of Michael Schumacher, Rubens Barrichello, Juan Pablo Montoya, and the Renaults of Fernando Alonso and Jano Trulli. Whoa, watch him shove this marshal, he is not a happy bunny. With Raikkonen out, Michael Schumacher had the opportunity to extend his championship lead to over 10 points, but it all depended on this last stint of the race. He fueled up to the end and set out after his brother Ralph, and Barrichello pitted behind him. Meanwhile, poor reliability struck twice at the same time, with Jano Trilli retiring from 6th place and Olivier Panis spinning off yet again, apparently due to a braking issue. Both were out of the race. Back to the strategy race, here's Montoya after his final pit stop, and as it turns out, he had jumped Barrichello. The BMW Williams was genuinely extremely fast here, possibly the fastest car, and Montoya had used that to his advantage and flown through the clean air. Not only that, but he had Schumacher in his sights too, with 20 laps still to go. Here's Coulthard in the pits, and oh, that's dangerous! I don't even know why he started to go there, as his lollipop man clearly hadn't told him to yet, but anyway, he's away. 
Meanwhile, Ralph Schumacher had made his last pit stop, and luckily for the race leader, it had gone much, much smoother. Oh, but look at this! Montoya has caught up to Schumacher, and he's going around the outside! Oh, contact! And around goes Schumacher! That didn't work, Michael. You hit the wrong part of him, my friend. Schumacher was beached in the gravel, spinning his rear wheels and gesticulating wildly to the marshals for a push. Now here's a point of contention. The rulebook at the time stated that a driver is not allowed to receive outside assistance in the form of a push from the marshals, unless that car was deemed to be in an unsafe position. Michael clearly was in a dangerous position, so he was given a push start and was allowed to continue in the race. Personally, I think this is against the spirit of the rules, and technically anyone who receives outside assistance should be out of the race, but hey, I guess you can only go by the letter of the law. We can, however, debate who was at fault for the collision, because as you can see from this angle, it's not exactly straightforward. Personally, I'd put this down to a racing incident, as I think Montoya gave him enough room and Michael was just unlucky that the light side-to-side -side contact caused a spin, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. With Michael dropping to 6th position after the contact, the top 5 now consisted of Ralph Schumacher leading from Williams teammate Montoya, then Barrichello, and then this scrap between Alonso and Coulthard. Coulthard seemed to be getting a little unsettled ooh, behind Fernando, and nearly run into the back of him on a number of occasions. With Kimi Raikkonen having put on such a stellar performance in the early stages for McLaren, this was not exactly a veteran's performance for the much more experienced Coulthard, who absolutely hated the 2003 regulations and one-shot qualifying in particular. And it's all over for Villeneuve, that's a gearbox failure. To be completely honest, with the way his race was going, I think he was probably more relieved than anything. Yet another race to forget for Jack, and also for Fisichella by the looks of things. That rear right tyre has seen better days. Oh dear, that's another big engine failure, and that's Cristiano de Matta. Such a shame for the Toyota driver who had honestly been running really well, and without his nose change earlier on, he would probably have been in the points at this stage. Not that it would have mattered, of course. That's both Toyotas out. Back to the fight for fourth place, here comes Coulthard! Ooh, that's a big mistake for David Coulthard, who goes flying through the gravel and through the air. Goodness, he got way too close to the back of Alonso for about the fifth time, and this time it's bit him hard. He nearly rolled it, and he is very much out of the race. On a different note, I'm recording this audio not long after Alonso was penalised for George Russell's crash at the 2024 Australian Grand Prix, and I have to say that I got a sense of deja vu when watching this one back. I personally think that it's absolutely ridiculous to hold someone accountable for what's going on behind them, and it should always be on the driver behind to prepare for all eventualities in front of them, except of course in a blatant brake check scenario. But anyway, that's a different plate of biscuits for a different glass of milk. Eventually, Ralph Schumacher came home to win the Grand Prix by an impressive 17 seconds over Montoya, who made it to Williams 1-2, a feat they would also achieve at the very next Grand Prix too, but then never again as of this date. Rubens Barrichello was third, followed by Fernando Alonso, Michael Schumacher, who actually nearly caught Alonso at the end, Mark Webber, Jensen Button, and then Nick Heidfeld, who scored a point despite starting from the pit lane. Great drive! 14 cars finished in total, but 15 were classified due to Coulthard spinning off so late on in the race. Guys, before I give this race a score, I want to let you know that I have a daily motion account for all the videos that get taken down from my YouTube channel by the pesky FOM bots. Due to the high levels of parody, review and education my videos contain, I believe that all of them fall under fair use, but sadly this isn't always enough. On my daily motion, you can find the 1996 Monaco and Portuguese Grand Prix, as well as the 2008 Japanese Grand Prix, and more. I also now have a Twitch channel, where I stream about one a week and would really like to grow my audience. The links to both of these accounts are in the description of this video. Thank you. I gave the Grand Prix a 7.7 .7 out of 10, mainly because of the championship implications of Raikkonen's DNF, Schumacher's spin and Williams's 1-2. After this race, just 15 points separated the top 5 drivers in the championship, and with just 7 races to go, it was anyone's game. You could honestly point to so many moments in the race and say that they influenced or even decided the outcome of not just the Grand Prix, but the World Championship as a whole.
This was a highly unpredictable race with some pretty good on-track action as well, and I have to say that it's races like this that really sum up what made the 2003 season great. I'll give the Driver of the Day award for Best Driver to Quick Nick Heidfeld, who we barely saw any of, but who did an awesome job to climb from last place all the way up to 8th on home soil, actually passing his teammate Frentzen in the process. I'll give the Inouye Trophy for Worst Driver to David Coulthard, who endangered his mechanics, himself, and Fernando Alonso in the space of about 10 minutes. Drive safely guys, and I'll see you all next time.